I was reading an article on science where it was saying that not only are we all different from each other as individuals, but within our body, there is no pair of cells that are identical to each other. We, we are as diverse as diverse can be, even within ourselves. And when you look at the New Testament, the, the body of Christ... The Church of Christ, the Assembly of Christ, is described in that way as a body. And Paul goes through this a lot. He talks about members in particular. And each one has their purpose. Each one is unique. Each one is special. Each one is different. Each one has a purpose that is not like any other one. And I understand that a lot of people say, no, Mark, no, I know, because I know this group or this ethnicity or this race or whatever, and they're all the same. And to the extent that's true, it's not really true, but to the extent that it is, it's because we, we volunteer, voluntarily give up our individuality. We identify as this group, as this ethnicity, uh, with our skin color or our culture or our geographical location or any one of a number of things, a club, a religion, some belief system, some orthodoxy, some creed. And so we identify and we say, I am this. And I'm not necessarily knocking those things, especially when it comes to cultural things. Those are fine to, uh, to identify with them and enjoy them. When you say, I like that, but when you say, I am that, that's where the dilution happens. That's where the diminishing of your individuality happens. Because what I'm trying to put forward here is that there, there's not all kinds of people, as in there's all these different groups, and we can separate them, and some people say there's two kinds of people, or there's three kinds of people, or... Oh, there's a, you might be more liberal. It's, oh, there's a lots of different kinds of people, and you might fit in this group. And in the religious world, they'll say, "Are you a Mary or are you a Martha?" You know, and people say, "Oh, I'm I'm just like this apostle because he's like that, and I'm just like that one." And and because people like these things. And again, I'm not saying it's inherently evil until you say, "I am that. I am a Mary. I am a Martha. I am a insert your denomination here." You can voluntarily do that, yes, but you are choosing to change your identity when you say, I am that. I like that. Hey, that's fine. But that's not who you are because you are not made to be someone else. You are not made to fit into someone else's mold, someone else's idea of what, it, what reality is. You are made by your Creator. Who is an individual. And that's why I say there is none of that. Not in reality. There is only the creator. And each one of us. Who he made. And he formed in our mother's womb. Fearfully and wonderfully. He did that. And he did that with a lot of thought. And a lot of intention. And that's why each one of our cells is different. Because it lines up with that whole image. That Paul presents when. He says, we are part of the body of Christ. There's something like 50 trillion cells, I think, in the human body. I don't know if there's that many people who are saved or are going to be saved in the end. But there is a lot of people, hopefully in the millions, if not billions. And we are all unique for, from each other. I, I, I just don't think we're going to go to heaven and all be exactly the same, singing in the same tone, with the same colored eyes, and saying the same words, and thinking the same thoughts. I think the beauty of heaven is that there will be so much individuality because we come from the individual. That is one of the most, if not the most, significant characteristics we share with our Creator. He is totally unique and an individual from any other one, any other individual, as are you. He's the perfect form of existence. And you can be a part of that body, a part of those millions or billions or trillions by accepting that gift of life from that individual. Now, I don't want to get too far off in this, but it is important 
not just to know that you have a wonderful gift, the gift of life, the gift of mercy and grace and forgiveness and love and meaning and purpose and all these things. It matters where those things come from. It matters where love comes from. That's why we reject so harshly, and we say it very harshly, that, or at least I will say it, that anything that diminishes God or, or separates or divides God is demonic. That is the most demonic thing you can do is to take your Creator and dilute Him and make Him less than or make him part of a, a collective or any of that. That is all evil. Because you can never really know where that love comes from. Where that acceptance, that forgiveness, that kindness, that mercy and grace. And meaning and purpose and all that. that can, they can only come from him. You can never know where it comes from unless you know him. And the most common Christian theology tells you, you can't know him. They don't say those explicit words. But they say it because... Well, you can know them. And you can know each individual one. That's evil. That's profoundly evil. It's evil beyond any words I can express. You are an individual who is made in the likeness of your God. You are not three individuals. If you were, you would have problems. And we, we try to take care of people like that and help them and give them some form of counseling or assistance or whatever we can do because you're a troubled person if you think you're three people and most people that is people who call themselves christians are going around thinking their god is three people and i won't get into that either because there's many and varied reasons for that but it's not because they want to know the person of their god they want some other things but if you want to know the person of your god you will know the person of your god it's as simple as that he is a fair God. He is a just God. He is a kind God. He is a God of intimacy and he likes doing good things. And knowing your creator is a good thing, if not the good thing. I happen to think it's the good thing because I feel like it, as though I'm just scratching the surface of knowing him. And yet this is something that has tremendous impact on my life. Only in a positive way, even though I struggle with it, even though I don't always understand things. I have a limitless avenue, a limitless opportunity to seek and to search and to ask and to question and to ponder and to wonder and to pray and to listen and to hear and to speak and all of it. It is limitless what I can do because I know who my God is, the infinite one who gave me life and opportunity to really live as in a life of, of coming to, approaching and then getting to know this one who is intimacy himself, who is individuality himself, who is love and acceptance and kindness and mercy and forgiveness and meaning purpose and all of it. He is the person of all those things. That's why there's intimacy only in knowing this one. You can't have intimacy in a hodgepodge, in a committee, in the tritheism of these demonic beliefs. And I'm not saying you're evil if you believe it. But you're, you're not being serious about who your God is. You need to take this serious. You need to address this question and not just go, you know, and stamp some little doctrine of men or theology or tradition of man on it because the Westminster Statement of Faith or whatever has come up with some thing that sounds good so you can just repeat it and quote the church fathers or whatever. That is lazy. It is lazy at best and it is evil at worst. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't miss the opportunity to know the individual who is the individual of all individuals, who created every other individual as unique as any of us can be from each other. And don't give up your identity. Don't surrender it. Don't throw it away so that you can say, I am this thing. I am this ethnicity. I am this color. I am this fan of this team. You know, I saw a sad thing the other day. I was in a store and there's a guy walking around just randomly walking up to men and saying, Go Broncos! And I just, you know, I just felt sad for the guy. It was just sad. That was his identity. And he, I'm sure he's going to find a lot of people that want to go say, go, go Broncos. Again, I'm not saying it's evil to, to be a fan of something. An entertainer, a sport, whatever. That's fine. 
it's when you go from liking to being. That's not who you are. You are a child of your creator. And when you get that, you start to see him more clearly. Because your identity is in him. I never used to understand that. I saw it for years and years and years. That's why I'm so passionate about this. I sought to understand it. And it's all wrapped up in his person. I'll never really know who I am until I start to see who he is. And that's why I'm starting to see who I am. And it's not what I used to be. Because as you see him more and more, you change. You do change. This is a transformative thing that happens. Paul describes it in 2 Corinthians 3 in the last verse. How that we are being changed from glory to glory as we look at our God, as we seek our God, as we receive what He has for us through belief in Him, through trust in Him. That's what faith is. It's trusting Him for good reasons. I trust Him for good reasons. He has a wonderful track record of why I should trust Him, starting with the fact that I even exist and just going from there. And all the complexity of life and the wonder and the opportunity and the resources no matter where you live, you have the resources of your mind and the ability to ponder and to think and to reach out from your heart toward your, towards your Creator. It is a glorious thing to know Him. And it's something that's available to everyone because He is a good God. He simply is a good God. And He would not turn His back on anyone and just let them be in the doldrums of whatever little little identity complex they can get into that's around them in their particular environment. He is available to all. And you can, you can have that. And it's so much more. It's, it's, it doesn't even compare. To say it's more to me doesn't quite do it. Like it. Enjoy it. But don't be it. Be a child of the one who made you. The one. The only one. Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, amen.